you can start by introducing yourself and where we are, why we are. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, good afternoon, uh, Andolan. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I am Antonio Pedro. I'm the director of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, sub-regional office for Eastern Africa, based in Kigali, Rwanda. I'm here to uh, participate at the third African Union conference of ministers responsible for mineral resources development, which is discussing how to uh, mainstream the African mining vision uh, at the national and sub-regional level through uh, broadening ownership uh, here in Maputo, Mozambique. Okay, what have, uh, have you been doing about the Africa mining vision and what is Africa mining vision for an ordinary African people? Can you briefly Well, as, as you know, um, Africa is richly endowed with mineral resources. And uh, until 2009, the continent did not have a framework that would uh, basically articulate how these resources could be exploited with a view to promoting the development of the continent. So the African Mining Vision, which was adopted by the African Union Heads of State and Government in 2009, provides for that framework. It is uh, uh, it essentially it's an effort to uh, promote broad-based development by using our mineral resources in a judicious manner, by promoting linkages, better linkages between the mining sector and other sectors of the economy, by ensuring that. Uh, we uphold to the highest uh, uh, corporate, uh, environmental, uh, social uh, standards and that the participation of our communities is, is ensured and that the benefits reach those communities. So it is, it is a, um, uh, an important uh, vision, but uh, for it to become a reality, it's important that it's owned by our member states and its own by citizens. So this meeting here in Maputo is uh, meant and was organized with a view to discussing the terms and conditions to ensure that ownership. We are also here to launch officially the African Mineral Development Center that will provide the coordinating platform for the implementation of the vision. Uh, so those are the key objectives of this meeting, discussing how to make sure that the agenda is owned uh, beyond Addis Ababa, beyond the African Union, that is owned by our member states and uh, RECs, and also uh, within countries that is owned by uh, large stakeholders beyond governments. We, for example, this morning had very interesting presentations on what we call the country mining vision. And um, this is an effort to try and articulate how to ensure exactly what those, those parameters that we've made reference to. Uh, how to uh, make sure that the, the mining sector is, uh, contributes to uh, greater uh, and shared benefits. So that's essentially what we are, we are here to discuss. Okay. Uh, what can you say about for uh, an ordinary African people uh, about the significance of this African vision, you call it African Mineral Development Center? What does it mean for a, a rural person who has been living with these minerals for centuries? It, it means uh, an opportunity for their voice to be heard through uh, some of the platforms that the vision provides for, which is uh, credible uh, consultative processes, uh, which is uh, uh, enshrined uh, on uh, the access to information, uh, disclosure of contracts, where the terms and conditions uh, for the exploitation of resources are, are, are framed, where um, we have um, uh, platforms for dialogue, uh, for multi-stakeholder dialogue, uh, as reflected, for example, in the country mining vision process. So this is uh, uh, what the vision uh, uh, aspires to achieve. However, from the aspiration to reality, of course, there is a long, long way to go. And, and, and what we are trying to say here is that, well, let's, let's discuss how to, to shorten that, that, that process, how to uh, uh, ensure that uh, the benefits are, are felt. For example, one of the key arguments in the African mining vision is that whilst financial resources is important, it is also equally important to discuss other opportunities, like, for example, maximizing job opportunities, ensuring that um, the, the local companies participate in the provision of goods and services of the mining sector. This touches communities. 
this, I mean, it's not abstract. You know, this is reality. You have jobs. You have I mean, opportunities to expand your business. We also say that infrastructure and, and mineral sector has, because of its rents, because of the wealth that it generates, it has the capacity to build very expensive infrastructure, railways, 600, 1,000 kilometers. Our, what we, the African Mining Vision says, is that this infrastructure should be used also to open up opportunities in other sectors of the economy. So if you are a farmer and you are located in a very remote area, you can, uh, 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 through your members of parliament and so on, say that, well, why don't you have an access route that links with this major railway that transports minerals? So that uh, that, that infrastructure is down used for development beyond the mining sector. So those are some of the, I mean, very concrete uh, aspects uh, that could touch uh, uh, communities that live around mining. Thank you so yeah. much.